Hello again, everybody, and thanks very much for joining us as we explore the wonderful world of Azure. In the last video, we looked at what cloud is and why would you consider adopting or migrating to Azure specifically at a very high level. What I wanted to explore with you in this video is an example of the customer journey to Azure to achieve better performance, but also arguably better costs due to reducing the management time as well as the infrastructure costs. Now, the client is a well-known car manufacturer, which is Mazda. So Mazda actually had various business units that were all responsible for designing and overseeing different aspects, such as application systems and also another one maybe for product development. Now, while these teams would build the plans and the actual development was actually being outsourced to another business. Now, the problem became apparent when there was a lack of office space in certain regions where those developments took place. Even when there was space, often it was done using virtual desktop infrastructure and a VPN. Now, this actually led to inefficiencies and also security policies that weren't being aligned. So what Mazda did was they made the move to Azure, specifically Azure Virtual Desktop, and this made things a hell of a lot easier. They were able to achieve an experience as if the user was on a physical PC in front of them, and they could provision all the underlying virtual machine infrastructure at the same time and scale it up or down to meet that demand. More importantly, they were able to actually manage the security policies and unify them for all their users. Now, there is a link if you want to read about this full use case in the comments. Now, this is actually a great example of how Azure has grown just beyond simple compute, storage, and networking. You now have full analytical services, for example, like Microsoft Fabric, as we've already discovered, and also the ability to set up AI-based resources using Azure Cognitive Service. But there are also different storage options, like things like blob storage for large objects or like pictures, or even Azure Files, which will replicate an on-premise file server to a certain extent, right the way through to backup and disaster recovery services to support your business continuity plans. Now, in this customer example, we saw how Azure Virtual Desktop, also known as AVD, helped to make the cloud relevant, not just for the techies and the developers, but also for the whole team, including frontline staff or external contractors. So AVD, at its core, is a seamless Windows 10 or 11 desktop as a service solution. Now, it does still use these underlying services like virtual machines in the background, but as a platform service, which is making it easier for you to manage and deploy the applications that the employee or your employees need in their daily work and actually scale up and down the resources quickly and manage the underlying infrastructure from a central management plane. So to benefit from cloud, you don't actually have to be as radical as adopting AVD straight out of the box. You might actually choose to start small and expand into it with specific systems or workloads. Thanks very much for joining me and we'll see you again next time.